All right, this is John Cullen with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And today I'm actually just hanging out in my garden. Actually, earlier I was just sitting in my garden, eating, relaxing, and observing uh, nature. And actually the reason for this episode today is because actually what I want to do for you guys is actually just take you guys around my garden. So actually I'll be holding the camera and show you guys what I see. And why am I doing this? Well. You know, I want to remind you guys that health encompasses many things. Not only what you eat, which, you know, I have a big focus on, but so many other elements. You know, you got to get proper sleep. I'm a big advocate of that, you know, proper exercise, proper activity, proper, you know, muscle conditioning, uh, proper mental game or mental exercises, pr proper thoughts in your head, right? Many different facets for health. And one of which that I'm really want to share with you guys today is the connection with nature. This is super critical to health. I mean, if you guys live in a big city, you, more than likely you guys are missing this component. So, you know, I try to bring nature to me in the city by having a full on backyard garden with lots of green where I could literally sink my bare feet on the ground, on the soil, get grounded in the earth and just, you know, simply uh, chill out, be quiet, and observe nature, and to realize that actually I am a part of nature. And you know, we think humans are we're above nature. And all that. No, we are a part of nature. And in my opinion, you know, humans are are messing up a lot of nature. So I want you guys to do your part to help nature. If you guys have a space, grow something, right? And even even if you don't have a place to grow food, that's all right. You can still have a connection with nat nature. Go out to your local park, go to your local beach, spend a day or half a day on your days off, you know, hiking in the mountains, uh, go to public parks, get a connection with nature and build that into your lifestyle. I promise you, you will only be healthy because of it. You know, there are published scientific studies that show you could have lower blood pressure, it could reduce depression, maybe even help cancer, um, you know, decrease stress. So many things by just simply getting a nature connection can be helped, you know? And I want you to do a 30 day nature challenge, right? For the next 30 days, get connected with nature. I mean, every day in my life, I am connected with nature because I, if I'm not traveling, I'm home at my garden. And if I'm traveling, I'm either at the beach, going hiking, visiting farms or visiting other places where I could literally, um, you know, just get connected with nature. And I, I think that's so important. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick up the camera and just uh, literally take you guys around my garden and uh, share some thoughts with you. So welcome to my garden. And this is like, I, I normally do like garden tours, but this is not exactly a garden tour because I, I don't really want to show you guys what's growing, but I just want to show you guys the nature that I've actually have brought into my space. So I mean, along this wall, you know, I mean, it just makes me happy when I'm walking my garden. I mean, look at this. You guys see those vines going up? Those aren't just like for decoration. Each one of those leaves are edible. This is edible Malbar spinach. And you guys can see some of the berries uh, starting to form there. Little white things will turn into like a purple. And then I'll be able to juice them for high anthocyanins. And just like walking around, I mean, everything you see in my backyard is edible in one form or another, or actually it wouldn't be here. And it just makes me happy. I mean, it makes me happy to just like walk by and I could see the flowers that you know are beautiful to look at but I could pick them and put them in my salads you know for additional antioxidants you know same thing with the marigolds or to see my cucumber plant that I planted and now it's growing nice and soon I'm gonna have my own cucumbers or it's cool to see nature and it cycles right when you have a garden you get to see nature cycles you know na nature's operates in cycles and this is the cycle of the lettuce. The lettuce gets in, grows as a baby. It gets a nice head, which normally is cut off, and then you buy it and you eat it. And if you let it go further, then it goes to its maturity cycle and reproduction cycle. And that's what we're seeing right now. And then I'll probably let it go to seed and it'll just float the seeds away. And that's basically spreading its babies. And then I'll have them coming up in random places in my garden more than likely. Or here, the water spinach, right? I mean, this, I started this plant with my own two hands. These started as, as like food that I bought 
and I rooted in water in my cloning machine. They grew roots on them and then I planted them. So literally it started from, you know, food from an Asian store <laughs> and these guys right there. So amazing that food from an Asian store could actually turn into plants in my garden that are now going to feed me the entire summer. And even in nature, you know, nothing's ever perfect. I mean, look, it's like holes in my leaves. Do I like freak out? <laughs> I'm also seeing some kind of like um, discoloration of the leaves. So there's probably some kind of like mite damage that I might have to uh, treat or something. No, I just kind of like observe and see like, oh yeah, there's some bug damage. Maybe I should inspect it. But luckily this is a um, ornamental sunflower that has edible seeds. Um, that kind of came up as a weed. And so, eh, it's not super important to me. If it gets super bad bug damage, I'll just, uh, you know, cut it down. Or my Ikira plants that I dug each one of these guys up with my own two hands and put them in pots. And now I get to revel in the beautiful flowers that are nice and red, but also edible. So yeah, I mean, I've just tried to create a little paradise on my spot. And it makes me happy, you know, just to be able to walk back here and see like just the whole wall of, of food growing. I mean, not just food, but greenery, you know, like the earth is green. I live in the desert. It's not a whole lot of green. So I try to get as much green as possible. And I mean, literally, this is like a green wall of longevity spinach so I can live longer and prosper. And it's going to seed. I don't think those seeds are viable or active or just to see nature that because the climate is getting warmer, right? Some of my peppers didn't lose their lives from last season and they're growing back. And so these are the ones that kind of look like skeletons with just very few leaves. They, are, they were just planted last year. They kind of had a hard uh, winter and they came back. I planted some new ones, some new friends to join them that are in better shape. And then to, uh, you know, pick ripe fruit from my garden. I mean, that, that really makes me happy. You never experience you know, the joy of picking ripe fruit that you grew yourself. I mean, yeah, it's cool to grow to go to a farm and pick your own ripe fruit, but to pick your own ripe fruit, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like pride of ownership. It's like pride of growership is what I like to say. I mean, you know, you did something, you grew your own food and then you're eating and it's like, and you're, and it's, it's like, the, that's the ultimate connection with nature, growing your own food. Cause we're so disconnected with nature. We're so disconnected with food because we just go to the grocery store and it comes in a plastic package or a bag or, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, uh, so, yeah, I mean, just could walk by and see my tree collards, six feet tall. Taller than me, actually. <laughs> Producing just green leaves that I could, that I, this time of year I like to juice every day. They do get stronger flavor. Or to see even, I mean, just observe nature eating my kale, or my collard greens. You guys see those little white things? These are called white flies. They basically suck the juice out of the leaf, out of the plant. So then at night I'll spray them down with water so that doesn't hurt any beneficial insects. And watch this. And they just like all fly away. It could be like snowing in the middle of summer. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could see that. Oh, the other thing about being in nature outside, man, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's pretty bright right now. The sun. Sun is super critical to our health. And I get some good sun every day. Of course, I like to put a hat on so my skin on my face, which is thin, doesn't uh, get too messed up. <laughs> but I do like to expose my body to sun for sure. Uh, certain amounts. I think are very important to get a certain amount of sun. And you know, here's just another bed. It's just all peppers. You know, each one of these peppers I planted with my own two hands. I babied them. I water them. You know, it has automatic irrigation that comes on. And then even below the peppers, I have greens to eat as a living mulch. And it's basically all purslane. So it's high in omega-3 fatty acids growing underneath the peppers. I harvested a whole bunch of purslane and ate with lettuce the other night in my salad. Or, oh, what I really like, what really makes me happy are like unique vegetables. I really love growing unique vegetables that literally it's hard to find or money can't buy. 
So like my purple carrots, totally amazing. And I'm letting them go to seed. So now, you know, these guys are gonna drop seeds and hopefully I'm just gonna have carrots randomly coming up in random areas of my garden. All right, walking through the garden. <laughs> and just seeing plant reproduction at work, right? This is my Egyptian walking onions. And uh, on this guy, you guys can see, these are top sets. So what, what happens is these guys get heavy, they fall over, they plant themselves, and they grow more. I mean, and nature isn't always perfect. Some, sometimes things happen, you know, over here, my ashitaba, you guys can see it's like the, some of the leaves are kind of brown, they're getting burnt. I mean, maybe this plant doesn't like too much sun. So, uh, that's just what it is. So like observe, you know, when you're in nature, observe things. Get lost. Like I know you guys are all stressed out about like, you're worrying about this, you're worrying about your breakup with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you're worrying about money, you're worrying about, you know, I don't know what you guys are gonna eat next, you're worrying about where, you, where your next meal is gonna come from. I mean, you're worrying about your car's broken down, you gotta fix it now, or you gotta get new tires, or there's a leak in your roof, or there's birds. <laughs> eating your goji berries. I mean, there's so many things to worry about, but you know, one of the th reasons why I like being in the garden is like you forget about all your problems. I mean, you just observe nature and, and sit still and sit quiet. So uh, actually, let me go ahead. Oh yeah, look, there's a bird. And he's gonna start eating my goji berries. I got him on camera this time. So let's observe nature together all right so I wanted to share with you guys actually the exact spot that I was sitting in earlier eating cucumbers <laughs> and just kind of like observing my garden. So I was like sitting here eating cucumbers and then I was like looking down at all my cherry tomatoes. You guys can see all the cherry tomatoes there. Totally like insane cherry tomatoes. Yeah, the red ones are pretty good. But then I like, I spy in my own eye over there. <laughs> The orange ones, they're even better. So actually then I ate and picked a whole lot of those. Then I was just sitting here quietly, not talking to myself, which happens a bunch. And I was looking over here, look at that. Oh my God. And I was like, this is so cool. It's like beautiful, brilliant purple. And this, these are all lavender, so they smell amazing. My mom wishes she could have some. But then, after the lavender, then I was like looking over here, if you guys see all that stuff right behind the lavender, I mean, it might just look like some kind of weeds to you. Um, it's actually all cilantro um, that was bolted, and now it's growing the coriander seeds, or cilantro seeds, which are used as coriander. And if you guys look super close, right? I know you can, you, can you guys see that in the HD camera? Let me go ahead and move in for you. Okay, you guys start to see that now? You're seeing all these black spots. I don't know how they appear on the camera there, but they're all these little black spots. And if you look closer, the black spots, they're actually moving. And actually, they're not even black spots at all. What they are, if you guys could see that on there, they're little beneficial insects. And what these guys are, these are like baby ladybugs. Never before has this really happened in my garden where I have like this many like baby ladybug larvae like hatching and just like chowing down. Evidently there must be some kind of aphid or white fly issue um, on my plants because I haven't actually sprayed any kind of even organic pesticides that could actually kill the bad bugs but also negatively impact the good bugs so this year I've stayed away from that purposely I've mainly been spraying water or these this other stuff that says not to hurt beneficial bugs and look all the beneficial bugs came and you know nature's a self-balancing system 
and it's just, just, it's just amazing to me to observe nature and how it self balances. If there's, if you have a lot of bugs, bad bugs in your garden, then guess what? The good bugs will come because that is their food source. So yeah, just totally amazing. I was just in awe, just watching these guys move, eat my bad bugs. Oh, look at that! Oh my God, two th cool things are happening right now. You guys see that? This is why I love nature. All right. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a bee flying around. Oh, he's right there. Oh, you see him? I think he, oh, he's right there. Oh, he's right there. Okay. Oh, he's right below me. Okay, I think he's flying away. Oh, and there's a ladybug that just flew. And then I just saw it. Oh my God, he was like right here. I don't know if I could find him anymore. I think I, I lost my sight on him. I just saw him though. There's a praying mantis, because I, I, I put out praying mantis eggs in my garden, right? And those guys are the coolest. That's a praying mantis egg on what I call a pop. It's basically on a bamboo stake stuck above the ground um, to simulate that it would be like in a, on a tree, on a shrub or brush. And basically when the weather's hot, that little egg hatches and out the bottom, like will be 100 to 200 little baby praying mantises. And the praying mantises basically will hatch and they'll be little, they'll be like little babies. And the praying mantis babies, they're like so fun. I never knew this. When they're babies, they're like, <laughs> they don't like care. They're just like jumping around everywhere. They're just playing. They have like no fear. Like when you were young and you're like, you think you'd probably jump off a building or something, but you can't. The, the praying baby praying mantises are like that. When they get older, you see a more mature and they're more like methodical. Oh, I found them. Okay, look, look, shh. Okay, look. Uh, you guys see them? You see him? He's moving. Okay, I hope you guys saw him. It's, it's kind of hard to. Okay, I think you guys could see him. He's kind of like right there. He's so small. Should be seeing it. Oh, and there's a bee. There's a bee on the other side of the praying mantis. Oh, look, and the, the praying mantis moved away. All right, anyways. Yes, I mean, this is just like hanging out in the garden. Oh, if you're wondering, what are those bags on there? I'm, I'm protecting my seeds actually if I leave the leave it open the birds will come and they'll eat the seeds which are food for them right just yet another reminder that we are a part of nature you know you have fruit trees birds will come and eat your fruit right for them that's their food it's not your fruit trees <laughs> it's theirs it's just nature so yeah this is just just I'm sitting down observing nature just being calmed and chilled out by it and oh I encourage you guys this actually are right, you guys are having a hard day at work right if you can <laughs> go out to nature take nature breaks right after you're in nature and you come back into work because like I'll often be inside and then I'll come outside um, take a break and I'll go back inside you'll be like more creative and you'll actually work better because you basically are basically re-energized by the sun, by the fresh air, by the connection with nature, by having your feet grounded on the ground, barefoot if it is safe to do so. All the insects and bugs and just to realize that, you know, we're just a small part or you are just a small part of nature. And, also, and consequently, I want you guys to do your best to preserve nature and, you know, leave a lighter footprint on the planet, you know, recycle as much as you can. Eat more plants as much as you can. Eat the foods that you grew as much as you can. These things will all help the planet. And of course, you know, completely eliminate or drastically reduce the animal foods that you eat. You know, that's a big burden on the planet based on my research. Oh yeah, here, this is cool. I mean, just looking at this is really cool. It's like, these are two, this is how my, this is how battles happen in my backyard, right? Two plants battle <laughs> for the sun. 
So you guys can see I had strawberry spinach, which are now drying on the, on the vine. So these are little red berries that you see basically everywhere. And then I had the shiso that actually um, grew from seed and basically overpowered and grew taller than the strawberry spinach. And now basically, so they're just battling. The strawberry spinach is trying to grow taller, but it's at the end of its life cycle. So now it's just basically trying to ripen up its seeds, drop the seeds so that they'll come back next year. And basically the shiso <laughs> has won and has taken over this whole bed. Um, shiso is related to basil and mint and it actually has nice uh, purple bottoms, uh, rich in anthocyanins. has a really neat, neat flavor. I encourage you guys to uh, grow it. It's super simple, super easy to grow. And in my garden now, it basically uh, grows as a weed. Here's another shot of nature in my backyard. Now, I did want to cover one more area, and this is an area that I like to go by every single day. Oh, and before I do, I'll show you my goji berries that the birds have been eating <laughs> since they can, and it's not netted. You guys can see all the goji berries on there. All the little babies starting to form. Some of the ones that are formed, some of the ones that are actually pecked. And also all the flowers. I mean, this is one productive plant right here. And you know, I don't mind sharing with nature. You know, some food. I don't want to share everything with them, of course. But some food's all right. And you know, I have a neighborhood cat that lives in my backyard. Not my cat, but it lives here. And I saw some feathers, and I think the cat actually got a bird, and that's just nature. But yeah, actually, I want to take you guys over to my compost alley real quick. All right, so last part of the tour is my composter, right? We're going to go ahead and open this guy up for you guys and show you guys what's inside. Look at that, compost. Now, this may sound weird. Every day I love coming out to my composters. I got to spin them to aerate them, but the other thing is I like to stick my hands in there and ruffle it around, I usually wear gloves actually. And then I like to smell in there too, right? There are scientific studies that prove that you know smelling compost or certain bac bacterium in the compost uh, can be actually quite healthy for you and actually act as an antidepressant. <laughs> Who would have thought compost could be so good? Now that being said, compost can be made poorly and bad and actually it could also be quite toxic. <laughs> So if you're going to smell compost, make sure it's a good compost and not a bad compost. Only plant material goes into my compost and I inoculate it with a few things. And um, I feel good about smelling my compost. You know, that being said, I'm not snorting it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much the end of the tour today. I think I'll give you go ahead and give you guys actually a one last closing shot uh, with my, and share my thoughts. So that brings me to the end of this episode today. Um, just basically a reminder for you guys to connect with yourself with nature go on a 30-day nature challenge right somehow get nature into your life whether you're going to go to a park for the next 30 days whether you're just going to hang out in your garden and you know take uh, active regular visits to your garden during your work day if you are able whether that means going out going hiking whether that means if you're lucky enough to live near a beach to go out to the beach and hear the ocean get the negative ions uh, blowing onto you whether that means um, playing with your own compost in your garden I mean whatever but I want you guys to have a nature connection each and every day it is at least as important if not more important than what you eat and of course you know I like to bring edible plant foods <laughs> and look at those a lot as my part of nature because that makes me extra happy knowing that I planted these guys I get to harvest them and eat them and to know that I'm just a part of nature and uh yeah and i'm just trying to bring it to myself uh, closer and this is a unique episode for me you know not quite as you know normal as i would normally do but if you guys enjoy this format like this episode hey be sure to give me a thumbs up i'll do more videos like this just you know this is what i was feeling today and my videos are basically what i'm feeling what i'd like to share with people and i after i saw what i showed you guys with the with the little ladybug larvae and everything and it was just so cool. I had to make a video for you guys to, to remind you guys to connect with nature. It is so important. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes I'll be coming out about every five to seven days. You know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And uh, finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes at this time. Teach you guys all aspects 
on how you guys can be healthier by eating more fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables and get connected with nature. They're always the best.